You're listening to the Veterinary Innovation Podcast. You're listening to the Veterinary Innovation Podcast. My name is Sean Wilkie, and along with my awesome co-host, we interview the innovators in this space every week. Ivan, please kick us off. Hey, I'm Ivan Zak. I'm excited to introduce our today's guest, Luke Feldman. Luke is a director of product at VetCheck. He is a user experience professional that understands the importance of the user's perspective when it comes to delivering tangible outcomes. As the director of product, he is responsible for ensuring that the development of digital practice tools will make life easier for vet teams and their clients, and most importantly, are engaging and simple to use. Luke, welcome to the show. Thank you for finding the time. Thank you very much, guys. Wonderful to be here. So VetCheck, this is a digital product. You're out of Australia. I know that you're starting in the U.S. market. Tell our audience, please, what VetCheck is, what it is about, and what does it do? Yeah, for sure. Well, actually, you know, we've been around for just over 10 years now. So we've definitely been around the traps, uh, predominantly in Australia, Australasia, um, in the U.K., and a little bit in the U.S., but um, we're sort of wanting to expand our market there. But what VetCheck does is it's a digital document management system. So it's been designed really to help streamline workflows in clinics and also sort of save teams time. That's awesome. So I'm looking at your website and flipping through the functionality, and it reminds me of one software that I was involved in. So uh, there's a couple of features that I actually developed after I sold SmartFlow to IDEX, but the, uh, the digital forms and the dental chart, I think they developed then after in the full hospital workflow. So I will ask you a little bit of a curveball question. Um, so it looks like it's a set of features that is not very particularly common. There's no name for it probably because so one way is to try to pitch it. It's probably difficult. Um, as for SmartFlow, I had you know this one set of tools, but then we started branching out and developing others. And I was looking probably just like yourself for the deficiencies in the current workflows and what other PIMs are not covering. How do you as the product uh, leader in the company decide what products to include, not include, and how would you compete or overlap with the practice management systems? Yep. So difficult question like that. <laughs> uh, like, that's actually a really awesome question. And I'm going to break it down into chunks because I think there's a few key aspects that you've brought out there. Probably one of the first ones is, and you, you bring up a good point, for us, we're integrated with a lot of practice management software. And that is integrated in the way where there is actually a VetCheck button inside the practice management software, which is you open up the patient and there's a VetCheck button, which launches it. Um, now, one of the big benefits there is it will pre-fill VetCheck's e-forms, e-signature, the hospital workflow, general anesthesia charts. It will pre-fill it with all the information that comes from the patient and the pet owner details to save them time. That's something that took a long time to get over the line because obviously those conversations are long. But you're now in a place where the clinic and the vet teams are in the practice management every day. So to be able to have a vet check button in there and have that integration, and then for us, we also push back to the patient history. You've got a very, very nice, simple workflow. Now, to your point, how do you overlap? Something interesting, right? We started the business back in the day with client education. And it was all about solving a problem, which is pet owner comes in struggling with the pet. The vet says something, they go home, they don't remember. They call up the clinic. So we started creating engaging content, videos all in house. We have designers and those sort of things. And we've got around two and a half thousand pieces of content now. That was where we started. And we got a huge amount of traction because you know content is king. And to be able to educate pet owners there's so many benefits to that, including saving time for the vet teams. You know, traditionally and even now, you know, speaking to clinics, saving time is a massive pain point still. And even going digital, there's still a lot of clinics that are paper-based. So, you know, having that digital workflow management really, really helps. And then over the years, which comes to your other point, how do you determine what types of features? We have been 100% focused on feedback from clinics. And that's actually driven where we've taken the business. So, you know, we've now gone into the area of workflows, 
hospital whiteboard management, you know, general anesthesia charting, dental charting, hospital workflows. We're here and doing this because of feedback based on clinics. And I've had other businesses before and, you know, they always say in business, you know, listen to what your users are saying, you know, adapt and adjust on that. We really have made that a focus of our platform to make sure we're doing the right things and designing a platform in the right way. Yeah, it's so fascinating. I love that last comment. And it's contrary to a lot of advice that I've got from VCs, which is users don't know what they don't know. Um, and so I, I'd love you to address that. And then uh, on top of it, let's shake it up a little bit. I mean, every technology business is being disrupted with AI right now. And what does the future of AI look like for your business? Fantastic question. So two aspects, you know, looking at VCs and saying, you know, hey, people don't know what they want, right? You know, Apple's very, very good at doing that and going, I'm going to show you what you don't even know that you need. Now, for us, and for me, generally speaking, we might get a million feature requests from clinics, right? Oh, no, they want this and they want this and want this. But the critical thing and the key differentiator for us and for the approach that we take is we're not going to give you everything, but we're going to design it in a way that we can help you with your workflow. Now, that means I don't necessarily have to create a thousand buttons, right, to do this workflow. If you can look at how they adjust and how they adapt and what they need to do to get to that objective, well, then what you can do is create a simple user experience and create it and keep it simple. You know, less is more. I try to make sure that when we're developing the product, we don't keep just adding buttons upon buttons upon buttons. If it requires a refactoring of that workflow in order to tick those boxes, we will. Yeah, less is more and less is hard. Yep. Now, um. When you talk about AI, and it was actually something I'm glad you brought it up, we're fully invested into AI with our platform. Now, um, to give you a little bit of context, on average a month, we have a couple of million people using our software, so interactions. So, you know, we're recording hundreds of thousands of general anesthesia charts, hospital charts, dental charts into our platform. Now, what we're doing is we're actually grabbing that data and we're getting large language models to review and we're training our AI so that you can go into a general anesthesia chart as a vet clinic, create a new chart, and you can get an understanding that if you're using certain medications, your expected safety, heart rate, respiratory rate can now be visualized in our platform to now give vet teams a very, very good understanding on where things may go up or down, or you need to look at this and you need to identify it. We're also using AI to um, make summaries of what people are doing in these types of charts to then can be pushed back into practice management. And where do you think it all goes? Let's, uh, let's put our magic crystal ball out here. Like, so your business, you know it really well, quite a long time. Yep. Just for context, how many users do you have on your platform? We've got over a thousand clinics globally. Great, so over a thousand clinics, Zoom out, five years, what does the business look like now that AI has really taken a hold? I think, and look, this is my personal opinion, I believe AI is another tool, right? It's like Photoshop, it's like Illustrator, it's like Canva, it's like any of those tools, and it's going to help people do things better. Now for us, and where we're looking at it, we have millions of data points on, say, general anesthesia, on dental charts knowing that a dog of a certain age getting these types of dental extractions may be prevalent to certain things in the future. We're using that type of data and training it to help clinics be more effective at what they do. A lot of people go, oh, there's going to be AI and we're going to get rid of these people and we're going to remove these people. I don't believe that and we're not designing our platform to do that. We want to supercharge and make those people in vet teams, veterinarians, supercharge their abilities help them be better at what they do, not necessarily eliminate them. That's so cool. You know, as you're talking about it, I remember in the smart flow days, we were hoping to do what right now is possible. Just that when, well, I sold it in 2018, end of it, there was nothing like that then. But I knew that every button that we click on smart flow, whenever we provide treatment or run anesthesia sheets that we had also, all of that could provide significant amount of information that if, if it was easy to process, yes. then we could 
contribute so much to the medical decisions and predict what's going to happen during anesthesia. We were trying to do this sort of tele anesthesia platform using it and suggest, but now it's possible. It kind of gets me excited, you know, to see what's going to happen with all these things. And I, and I totally agree with you. Nobody, like there's going to be people replaced just like with anything, you know, yep. when the, with the whale fishing, they were replaced with cars and Ford horses were replaced. Like everything was replaced and it's just a cycle of technology and innovation, maybe a little more so right now, but I'm not worried about our profession. I don't think you can replace veterinarians, technicians and, Someone has to do the work. It's not only intellectual work that they do. But interesting thing then, how do you steer your product with it? Because I keep looking at this and Sean and I have these, this is why we're kind of latching onto this AI conversation. I apologize if we're talking too much about it, but it's just so hard to keep up with just information that's coming out because now all of these AI platforms, they can frenetic and they do like releases in the same week, like yep. Google with open AI and everybody And the fear that I have and all the startups and the products that are out there using them, that these platforms and the infrastructure outpaces the solutions that people build on them. It's so interesting to observe. And do you do anything as the entrepreneur and in this environment, especially using AI, to kind of keep the product ideas ahead of the game or at least on par with the game that's happening? Look, that's a really, really good question. And um, it is moving at a frenetic pace. Like, to your point, Ivan, if you talk about even 24 months ago, you couldn't do what we're doing now. Even three months ago, and if you look at in three months' time, like looking at, say, ChatGPT 4.0, you're opening up a whole new level and a whole new can of worms. I think for me, there's a couple of different approaches, right? There's that one where I've got to just keep running, I've got to keep running, and I've got to keep up with it. I think for us and our platform, you know, we've been around for quite a few years now. I believe we know what we want to do with this type of machine learning, this type of AI, and we can apply it without having to go, well, we're racing and racing and moving and moving and moving. Because if you look at the training of an AI like that for, say, anesthesia charting, having those millions of data points, you can do something right now. You don't need to say, okay, in three months, we're going to be using ChatGPT 5, 6, 7, 8. You can be using the current tools out there to create something that is so far advanced for anything that's out there, I think there's a line that you have to draw to say, okay, we're going to step in here. I'm going to start playing here. I've seen companies already, and I know people that have startups that are doing that running game. And they're just running and running and running because like next version 3.54, 4.55, they're already talking about five now with the billions of computational power. It's going to, like you you can't keep up. So I think there's a, you got to draw a line in the sand and you got to go, okay, do I understand what the objective is? And can I achieve it with these tools now? Or do I need to wait a little longer? For us, we can definitely achieve what we want to, to really help improve vet teams. I think that's interesting. It's an interesting approach. However, I'll poke a couple holes in it from personal experience. So uh, pick a use case, you know, anesthesia form. You've got the data. You train 3.5. It works perfect. You put it over there. It's now running. You're off to the next feature, building the next thing that your clinic uh, wants. Meanwhile, you've got a vet that's using uh, 4.0, and they're doing everything that they can do with the feature that you've created, plus they're doing five other things that they can't do in your tool. And they come up with a new use case in their sleep, and they try it, and it works. And then they stop using your tool uh, because they can do absolutely everything with GPT 4.0. How do you stay in business? Okay, I've got a very good answer for that. And um, it's actually a very simple answer. GPTs, they're, they're systems, okay? So they're systems, they're data. They're massive databases and you've got a very rudimentary interface. I type, I might take a picture or whatever. But the one key thing that these systems are missing is the user interface and the human computer design that is relevant to a vet audience. Yeah, it's all about the user interface. I truly believe. 100%. Yeah, it's yep. that's the future of technology. I, I strongly believe. Okay, so I think you're well positioned and that was a great answer. Um, I'll back off now, Ivan, your turn. <laughs> <laughs> We're interrogating you here. <laughs> look, go ahead. Uh, look, that's okay. I'm, I'm up to the challenge. Um, I love AI and I've been using AI for at least the last two or three years, even before these models have sort of come out. I've been a very, very early adopter. So I love this sort of tech. I can see where it's going. And I think especially in the vet space, there's so many amazing things you can do 
But again, it all comes back to that supercharging for the vet teams as opposed to getting rid of them. That's a big thing for me. And it's the, the user interface, the user experience that has the least amount of friction that's in the right place at the right time every time. Because that's the problem, and then and you know and then the fight is real. Um, this integrations piece and making it a seamlessly integrated platform that I think, you know, most vets that use technology. So let's not say ninety five percent of all vets in the world. I think they go to sleep wishing everything would talk together, wishing it was standards when they you know locum at one hospital and go to another and everything's different um, and they use different codes and different titles for things. And so there's there's big problems for AI to solve in vet med. And I think, you know, we've had that conversation about standards a million times, but I think I think the technology and the infrastructure that is needed to solve these problems finally exists. We just need to get the industry on board to kind of solve them together, which that's a hard problem. Look, it certainly is. And I um, I'm going to sort of bring a point to Ivan as well, you know, the work that you did with SmartFlow and the integrations of that Jeez. was a massive piece, right? That's how he lost all his hair. <laughs> well, look, it's a huge, huge thing to be able to do that. And for us now, we have a lot of integrations and it's taken us many years to get these. However, there's a huge, huge upside to this, right? Which is, again, coming back to that human interface and that simple interface, We've got that simple interface that can plug in and is plugged in with this practice management software. Now, what that allows us to do is maintain that ecosystem of simplicity. But then if you look at the practice management software, it's a database. It's a data warehouse. And we now have the simple user experience that sits on the top to help you do things simpler. And I think for us, that's always front of mind to make sure that, you know, to your point, Sean, you want that simple user experience. It's easy for everyone that's integrated. And right now, with all of our integrations, doesn't matter what clinic you go to, you can plug in, you click on the vet check button, you're going to have that beautiful, consistent user experience to be able to do what you need to do in your day. So on that, I know that you're now advancing into the US and Canadian market. Who is your ideal customer? And because there's a couple caveats to this. Once you open the can of worms of integration, then immediately, you know, my typical annoyance was that we well, could use our system as a standalone. But once you open a can of worms of the first integration, the immediate question they ask, they say, who are you integrated with? And you're like, um, easy bet. And they're like, cool. When you're going to be integrated with MMR, come to us. Yeah, come like, to us. Yeah, you can use it as a standalone. But when you have that, then come back. And then immediately a total addressable market goes whoop and just shrinks. So who is that ideal customer that is listening right now? We have quite a few folks and they might want to try uh, the product. Who are they and uh, and who can we recommend and how do they find you? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, for sure. Well, look, you can visit our website, vetcheck.it. Um, it does have all of our integration partners. In the US, the Covetra suite of tools, we are definitely integrated with those. So whether or not your Avamarks, your Impromeds, Pulses, your RX Works, those sort of things, we're definitely integrated with those. We've got an easy vet coming down the line. Um, we've got a lot of UK-based ones like your Robo Vets and your Merlins and things like that. But I think right now in the US, Covetris is a big partnership that we have. You know, you can use our platform standalone and you can create and do things. But the big benefit, which goes back to an earlier point, is I'm in practice management software every day. And if there's a button in there that I can click on or, you know, I can go into VetCheck and type in a, a patient ID and it sucks in all the information for me, you've got a really nice experience, pushes back into the practice management. There's your, your record in your history and away you go. All right. Well, where do people find you? Uh, VetCheck.it. You mentioned that. Yep. I apologize. Excellent. Well, we're running out of time as we usually do. There's two questions that we ask at the end. Question number one, what book, YouTube video, TED Talk, whatever source of information that inspired you recently, you can recommend to our listeners? Yep. Okay. So I have a very simple one. Apple has brought out iOS 18. So it's not a book. It's not a website. Well, it's maybe a website, but they've really pushed forward with some amazing accessibility features like really amazing accessibility features. One in particular that I wanted to sort of showcase, it's relevant, not so relevant to this audience, but it's amazing nonetheless, is motion sickness in cars. 
So if you look at screens and you get motion sickness, they've developed this tool and this overlay which actually has a rows of dots that float down the side of the screen and actually go opposite to the direction that the car's moving. And this counterbalances and counteracts the motion sickness of if you're reading text in a car. They've also done some really amazing things like eye tracking and really push the innovations for accessibility. For me personally, I am all about accessibility and inclusivity. So that for me is really, really inspirational to just know that you know your base device is now opening doors for so many other users. So cool. Uh, last question is another innovator in the industry that you think we should have on the show. Um, Doug Brooks from ABC Intelligence. The work that they're doing over there is really, really innovative and they're doing a lot of stuff with AI as well. And um, I think it would be a really good follow-up topic for you guys. I'm sure your audience is interested in AI as well. Thank you so much for listening to the Veterinary Innovation Podcast. If you want to hear about our new episodes, please follow us on any social media channel. Also, you can check out our website at veterinaryinnovationpodcast.com. See you next week.